Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the React Masterclass by My Project Ideas. I am Mohit, your tutor, and today we are going to see what are stateful and stateless components. So let's just see what we are going to cover in this tutorial. We will see what are the stateful components, and we will also see what are stateless components. We will review the use cases of both of them and we will see the benefits and drawbacks of each of them and the stateful and stateless components also have the examples and i will mention them in, inside of the code video so let's just see what are the stateless components first so let's just see the definition stateless components are the components that do not manage or hold any state they simply receive data and render it they are also known as functional components or you can say that uh, the example is here like uh, a component that can receive a prop as a name and just using that prop and doing nothing on that particular property of the data so it is not altering data in any kind so that's why it is called stateless component so what are its characteristics so there is a no state man management inside of this component and this thing rely entirely on the props passed down from the parents or sometimes it may not have the props it uh, represents a static simple element so pure functions these components are often pure function meaning they return the same output for the same input they do not produce side effects as easy to understand and easy to reuse due to their simplicity and lack of state management stateless components can be easily reused across the different parts of application stateless components perform better since they do not involve state management logic so the rendering is not that costly for stateless components and now let's see what are the stateful components the stateful components are the components that manage their own state they can hold and modify their state based on the user interactions or the events they are also known as the class com uh, class components or stateful com functional components when using hooks uh, the basically this thing mean here that we can also define the states in the class component and also in a functional component so any component that is using a state inside of it are stateful components so such as that uh, in future we are going to see a use state hook so right now don't you worry about that so this use this state hook is used to define a state inside of a component so as you can see that JSX is returned here correctly. We have also defined a user state hook inside of our logic. And inside this example, you can see that the count is there and the count is this thing. And we can alter the count by clicking it on a button. And this is the button here. So there's a set count function that will alter this state. So no in depth for the, right now, because I'm going to show you how these things are working in the future videos. We will have a separate video for the use state hook. And what are its characteristics? So stateful components manage their own internal state using use state, use reducer, use reducer, or similar hooks. They can have a complex logic and uh, to manage the state and respond to the user actions. And for the local state, each instance of the stateful component maintains its own state. The states can be global or the local. So for example, you have seen like there is a button here. So for, you are interacting with the button inside this component. So it should do something. That's why it should maintain a state. So lifecycle methods. Stateful class components can utilize lifecycle methods like component did mount, component did update, component will unmount, and use effect like things. Because these components have side effects. So let's just see the use cases for both of them. So for the stateful components, these are used for most most of the time the interactive elements like uh, buttons, forms, models, lists, or or anything related to that. And for the stateless component, they only display the static elements and do not require the state management. We can uh, say that headings, footers and some UI elements like uh, a card or something like that. 
stateful components can contain the dynamic content. I mean, the data is changing regularly inside a component, then it is called a dynamic component. Uh, not necessarily a proper definition, but yes, uh, you can have the basic idea like it is having the data that is changing constantly. So stateless components are the reusable. When creating a reusable component that can be used in different parts of the application, stateless components are good choice. Okay, fine. It doesn't mean that uh, stateful components are not reusable. They are also reusable. So for the complex components, we refer to the complex behavior. We need to manage the component's own state. So that's why the stateful components are ideal for the complex situations. And but for the performance optimization, uh, like uh, stateless components can be more efficient due to their simplicity. Uh, they are complementary with each other. I mean, uh, there can be a lot of situation which, uh, which require stateless components and some situations require state full components, but they are complementary. They don't defy each other. We can't use one in place of other. So let's just see benefits and drawbacks of the stateless component. So what are the benefits of the stateless component? Benefits are simple and easier to understand, easier to test due to lack of state and can improve performance by avoiding unnecessary state management. And what are the drawbacks? Limited functionality since they cannot manage their own state. There is only one drawback. And now here see for the stateful components, they can manage their own state and handle complex interaction. They are more powerful and flexible. And what are their drawbacks? More complex and harder to understand. Can be harder to test due to state management and potentially less performant due to state management overhead. So as you can see, there are the both examples of both of the stateful and stateless components. As you can see up there, there is a simple component that is taking the image URL and alternative text and returning this image with this particular URL as SRC. But in the stateful component, as you can see, there is a use effect defined it. There is a timer, timer functionality. Like uh, these seconds are changing constantly inside of this component. Don't have to dive in depth for this right now. We will see this thing in future also. So now conclude this thing. Understanding the difference between the stateful and status component is crucial for building efficient and maintainable React application. By using the right type of component for each use case, you can optimize the performance and improve the code readability and create a better user experience. So let me show you now the examples of the stateful and stateless components. So as we are inside of our previous project, and now we will do what? We will explain the stateful and stateless components. And now we should first run this project, npm run dev. This is a script we should run so that our project will start. Okay, it has started already. And I, I will control click on this one and it will open this new window inside the browser or new tab inside the browser. Let's wait. Okay, as you can see, the our project is running. Hello React Masterclass, because it is mentioned here inside the app.jsx. Hello React Masterclass, fine. So inside of the component, we already have some components like this component.jsx. Let's make a new one. I will name it uh, state less component.jsx. I will type the snippet and our component is created. And let's import this particular thing in app.jsx and let's use this thing in here state less component okay i think there's a typo for this one state less now i think we are fine if i go here and i see the project okay as you can see the stateless component is here and now what we have to do is uh, we have to go to this stateless component you can type anything like uh, this component don't have states. Okay, fine. And if we see, it is reflected here. As you can see, it is already in stateless components because it is not having any kind of a state. 
or not any kind of dynamic data. For example, if I pass here a prop like uh, uh, text, and I will uh, redeem this text inside here in the dynamic code block, text here. And let's just see, go to the app.jsx and I will pass the text as a prop. And what I can do is like, uh, this is text. Now, if you see the changes inside of this one, this is text and this component don't have states. As you can see, you can pass any kind of data, any kind of, like if I do, this is not text, a little bit of spacing. And if we see inside this one, this text is, com this is text and this component does not have state. This is not text and this component don't have states. As you can see that you can pass any kind of data till the component is stateless. So that was a stateless component for you. And now let's just see stateful component. Okay, let's just make a new one. New file stateful.jsx. I will type the snippet here and I will import this inside the app.jsx. Import stateful and now let's just define the stateful here okay it is and remove this stateless from here and let's just see as you can see the stateful is reflected here now what i'm going to do is uh, i will go to the stateful and define a button inside of this particular tick a button and text for text there is a paragraph tag paragraph tag and here it will contain text this text is right now not defined. We will uh, we will not get it from props. We, we will get it from the states. So there will be a button. So don't go into the complexity right now, and don't worry about this one. We will cover the use static hook in the future. So for pressing a button, I will say increase count. Okay, fine. And button will have an on click event together with uh, arrow function and it will do something here like if you click on this button this will do something but right now we have to change the state so let's just define a state don't you worry about that we will cover in the future so const text set text use state use state is automatically imported and we will pass our initial text here like initial or maybe initial count okay fine just define it as a count and instead of set text it will be set count and its initial value will be zero and let's just make it like count number which is count and we have to set the count every time we click on the button or increase the count. So set count previous value and for previous value will be previous return previous value plus one. And now our count will be increased. And now let's just see our component. As you can see, our count number is here. Right now it is zero and increase count button is there. If I click on this one, the count will be increased. So as you can see that I'm interacting with this component and this component is changing and rendering these numbers. So that's why it is a dynamic component or you can say it is having a state. So it is a stateful component. So that is the example of a stateful component.